when it comes to recording and editing and just being a great studio engineer in general, efficiency is key. And one of the most effective ways to be efficient is to be as fast as possible without actually compromising on any of the quality or tasks that you're doing. And one way to do this is using keyboard shortcuts. And keyboard shortcuts will enable your hands to just stay on the keyboard without having your hand to lift up from the keyboard, navigate your hand to the mouse, and then navigate the mouse to where you want it to be on the computer. In instead, you'll just be performing tasks on the keyboard itself. And you might not think that this is such a big deal. Just take your hand and navigate to the mouse. It takes an extra few seconds. You're right, but when you're doing so many, so many tasks per day, it definitely, those few seconds definitely very much add up very, very quickly. So today I'm going to be going through my top 10 Pro Tools shortcuts. And this is my top 10 most used shortcuts that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you stick around to the end, I'll give you a free gift. The first shortcut is entering the other edit modes temporarily with a modifier key. And this is how it goes. Let's say I'm in red grid mode, as you can see. All my edit moves, my cursor and my my clips will move only on the grid. Now, what if I want to move them in slip? I would have to go up to slip mode, select it, move it in slip, or do my edit in slip, then go back to grid because that's where I want to be. I always want to be in grid, let's say for this time being. But let's say I don't want to go back and forth up to slip, back up to relative grid. So there's a modifier key. If you hold down the command key or control key on Windows, if you hold down command key while you're doing the edit, it will temporarily transform you into the other mode. So slip and edit and grid will alter. So if you're in grid mode, it will temporarily shift over to slip mode. And if you're in slip mode, it will temporarily shift over to grid mode. So right now I'm in grid mode. I'm holding down my command key and I can make slip edits. I can just take this, you see how smooth it's going. It isn't technically in slip mode while I'm holding down the command key. If I lift up the command key, I'm not anymore doing that. And the same thing goes with slip. If I'm in the slip mode, now I'm in slip mode. If I want to temporarily en enter the grid mode, hold down my command key and I will only go in grid mode. So that is the first shortcut. The second shortcut is going to be a lump of a few shortcuts, and these are just to be uh, just viewing shortcuts, zooming shortcuts. So my zoom shortcuts that I use, by the way, for any of these shortcuts to work, most of these shortcuts in this video, for them to work, you have to have keyboard command focus on, and that's this little AZ button. It should be yellow. If this AZ button is yellow, then these shortcuts will work. If this ABZ yellow, this AZ button is not yellow, some of these shortcuts that I'm telling you will not work. So make sure you have keyboard command focus enabled in your edit window with that AZ button. Moving on to my zoom controls, as I was saying, my zoom controls that I use most often is the T and R key. T to zoom in, R to zoom out. Those are my zoom controls. I barely ever use the zoom controls up here in the window itself. I just use my T to zoom in, R to zoom out. Now that's just to zoom in and zoom out, but let's say I'm, I want to see the entire session right now. I want to just see what's going on. So to get my entire session into view horizontally, I'm going to use my option A. And I think on Windows, instead of option, it's going to be the Alt key. So holding down option while I press A will bring everything into view horizontally. For vertically, I have to use Command, Option, Control, the three modifier keys, and then hit the down arrow, command option control, down arrow, and you'll see that my entire session vertically comes into view. And now I can see my entire session and see exactly what's going on. And then once I'm ready to go back in and uh, start editing again and be like, oh, I want to go to here, just bring my T key in and I will make everything, let's say, bigger. Well, well let's say we'll go with the plus and minuses over here to make everything bigger. So that is my zoom control. So it's really four shortcuts. We have the T to zoom in, R to zoom out. We have the option A to horizontally view and then command option control down arrow for the vertical view. Moving on to the next shortcut. The next shortcut is going to be copying. So I could, the traditional way to copy a clip would be to just, you know, command C copy command V paste. But let's say I just want to drag it to where I want it to be. I want to drag it to exactly here, but I also want it to copy. I don't want it to go away. So if I just hold option, it will make a copy and then I could drag it to wherever I want it to go and it will be a 
copy of that. And option doesn't only work in the edit, like on the clips, this also works for plugins. So if I go to a plugin and I will, let's say, want to copy this dynamic EQ over to this channel, all I have to do is hold down option and drag and it will make a copy. So instead of it, let me just show that to you one, once more. Instead of me just dragging it over where it will just drag over, I can hold down option while I'm dragging and it will create a copy. So holding down option by doing on, on clips or on plugins will duplicate that instance, whether it's a clip or a plugin, and copy it to wherever you drag it to. So that is a great, great useful shortcut. The next shortcut you might have saw me do already, but this is the command equals. And command equals will toggle whether I see the mix window or the edit window. And this is something I use so, so often. So mix, edit, and I don't even have to think about it. The, you know, the traditional way would be to go up to window and then go to the mix window or go to edit window. I don't do any of that. Just command equals. It's so, so simple. The next one I want to show you is let's say I want to drag this clip um, either up or down. But you can see that once I start, start dragging it up or down, it starts sliding around. And I don't want that. I want to just be able to slide up and down, not side to side. So if I hold down the control key before I start moving it around, it will only go up and down. Now you see I'm moving my mouse all the way to the left, all the way to the right. It's not going anywhere. It's only going to go up and down because I have that control key hold held down. So awesome if you don't want to lose the place in which these that the audio is. Moving on to the next shortcut, another editing shortcut. If I want to break a clip so I can have two regions, what I have to do, all I have to do is place my cursor where I want it to be and press the B key for break. And this will work on a selection as well. So let's say I want this whole selection to be broken. So if I hit the B key, it will make one break on the beginning of the selection and one break at the end of the selection. And now you can see that my tracks, uh, my, my, my clips are broken. Segwaying into the next shortcut would be what if I want to mute this specific clip? All I have to do is press Command M and it will mute it and press Command M again to unmute. Now, I want to point out that in order to mute something, in order to mute a specific clip, it must be broken before. So that's why I did the B key and then press Command A because Command M. But if I, if I, uh, let's say, just wanted to mute this part without breaking it, press Command N, nothing's going to happen. So I have to first break it, press the B key, then press Command M, and then I will be able to mute it. If I want to unmute it, run again, just press Command N, M once again. Okay, so for this next shortcut, for shortcut number eight, I think that's what we're up to. This is going to be a recording shortcut. In order for this to work, you have to make sure you're in punch record mode or quick punch is what it's called. So just right click the recording, the record button and press quick punch. And now if I want to start recording, all I have to do is press the three key on my numeric keypad. If I want to stop recording, I could just press the three key again and it will even continue playing. And then if I want to punch in again, I'll just press the three key and we'll start recording again. Let me let me demonstrate to you what I mean. I'm going to still press the three key to start recording. And then let's say I want to stop recording but continue playing. I'll just press the three key again. It'll stop recording. And let's say I want to punch in right here. Just press the three key and we'll start recording again. Now, what if you don't have a numeric keypad? Well, first of all, I suggest you go ahead and get one. There are some nice shortcuts on the numeric keypad and it's always nice to have it. So get yourself like a wireless keyboard. Um, because a lot of laptops will not have a numeric keypad. But there is a workaround. For this shortcut in specific, you can use the command space bar instead. So command space bar will start recording. Command space bar again will, will, will stop recording. And command space bar again will start the recording. So that's a way out if you do not have a numeric keypad. Okay, shortcut number nine. And this is going to be the creating new track shortcut. So traditionally, I'll go up to track, new, and that's how to create a track. But if you see, Pro Tools actually in, in the menu bar gives us a shortcut of what we can do on our keyboard in order to get this, this action. And it's Command Shift N. Command Shift N brings up the new tracks window. It's an amazing way to bring up new tracks and without having to go to the menu bar. And by the way, this menu bar trick, the menu bar will give you a lot of Pro Tools will give you a lot of shortcuts that corresponds to certain menu commands that you can emulate on your keyboard. So 
it might be worth it just go through some things maybe maybe you're doing something like uh uh create a new session maybe you're doing that by going to file create new session which which in essence you could just do command n because that's what pro tools says the shortcut is so if you do command n that will be the shortcut so it might be worth it to go and look um on the right hand side of uh, right hand side of the menu uh, of the menu action that you're trying to do and maybe there's a cool shortcut so that's shortcut number nine the last and final shortcut it's really two shortcuts but i'm going to lump them together is creating clip groups so to make clip groups this is sometimes useful when you want to copy an entire section together so let's say i have these choirs here and i want to group them all together so i'm going to select all of them and i'm going to press command option g Command Option G will make a clip group for me, and then I could go ahead, and this will act as one clip, and I'll just copy it to where I want to, where I want it to be. And I usually don't like to have clips in this mode because you don't get to see everything. You don't get to really see uh, where the clips came from and what their clip gain is exactly. So once I'm done uh, copying, I like to ungroup them. So to do that, all you do is Command Shift Shift U to ungroup them, and there you go, Command Shift U. Command Shift U. So those are my top 10 most used Pro Tools shortcuts. And as promised, my gift to you, if you want an entire list of all the Pro Tools shortcuts that I use, go on over to the link below and download my free Pro Tools shortcut list. And in there, you'll find these top 10 shortcuts plus plenty, plenty more. That's all I have for you today. Till next time.